Hello everyone. So now we'll be starting with machine learning. Um, first few classes will be theory where I will be explaining what machine learning is about, what are the different uh, things that we have to learn in machine learning and uh, what are the different keywords that we should know, what are the things that we should keep in mind, what are the disadvantages, what are the advantages, what are the different types of machine learning. So all these things and uh, what how you can measure your different models that you can uh, that you create so these different things we'll be learning in the first few classes and then as and we build up on the theory we moving towards the r programming also as we move ahead we'll be learning different models right so these different models i will first give you an insight on the theory and then we'll move the r programming itself right so now what machine learning is all about so machine learning is a science wherein you are uh, developing a few models or algorithms and in order to predict an output variable or an output value with an acceptable error margin uh, given you have certain inputs. So over here we have certain inputs using which we create our model of machine learning and using this model we predict the different outcomes. Right now, this different predictions that we make using the uh, model that we have or that we create actually will obviously contain a few errors, right? So there are a few errors that we also get with these predicted uh, outcomes. Now, what do we do in machine learning is we create different models or we adjust the same model that we have created so that this particular error that is coming up is minimized. Right? So this is machine learning all about. These are basically building models, which obviously we using statistical uh, techniques and obviously R programming. So now let us go through what are the different phases in your machine learning. So straight away, I'll come to this particular slide. So there are three phases. First phase is your training phase. Now what is training phase? Training phase is wherein you have your input variables or what we call as the different features in machine learning. What are these features? These features are basically, for example, I'll, let me just take a very basic example over here. I want to predict uh, or a bank wants to predict whether the person that they are lending to will default on the loan or not. Right. So what my outcome, what the bank's outcome is over here, whether the person will default or whether the person will not default. Now, in order to predict these particular outcomes, we need few inputs or information about the particular uh, person that we are lending to. Now, what are these information that we'll be needing? For example, we might need the past history, credit history of the person, uh, the occupation, the gender, the age the salary, all these different things we'll be needing for that particular person, the number of dependents and many more. These variables or these inputs that we are taking in machine learning, we refer to them as features, right? We refer to them as features. Now, what is training phase? Training phase is that when you, when you fit a model, when you try to fit a model on the uh, data, data set which contains the input and the output variable. This is known as your training phase. The training phase, the researcher attempts to detect the relationship. So we, here we try to detect the relationship which can be possible between the output and the input variable. So I will try to detect what is the relationship between the salary, the occupation, the number of dependents and so and so on. The per, whether the person will be defaulting on the loan or not. So this phase where I am, you know, trying to understand my input, uh, trying to understand my output variable, trying to get the relationship between the input and the output variable, and trying to build a model is known as your training phase, which is one of the most important phase. Next, we have the validation phase. So what is your validation phase? Once you have made the model, once you have understood the relationship between the input and the output variable, once you have constructed the entire model, then you predict your outcome, right? So when we are predicting our outcome, we have to validate or it is also known as your test testing phase, wherein you have to validate or you have to test whether your output that we are getting from the model or the predicted output and the output that we already have. For example, 
there are some data which we'll be coming into uh, how we divide a machine learning models in different aspects we'll come to it later on so here we have certain input and we have our output variable right so now using this input i have built a model now using this model i have predicted my i have predicted my outputs right so these predicted outputs are compared with the actual outputs which i already have this comparison of actual output and predicted output is known as your validation or the test set now what is validation and test set which we are con uh, talking about over here is that we divide our entire data set that we have now the data set that we have over here the entire data set let me take a very easy example for example i have occupation of a particular person i have the salary and i have the outcome whether the person will be defaulting on a, on the loan or not yes or no i have been given information about five people over here although we'll be huge data sets i have been given information about the five people of their salary and their outcomes everything is given to me right now what i do over here is i take the first three data points i take the first three data points and i build my model and i build my model using the first three data set this is known as your first phase or the training phase wherein i was understanding the relationship between the inputs and the outputs building the model and in order to predict my out output so this i have done for the first phase now in my second phase what i and this data set this part of the data set is also known as training set training data set right now the next part which i have for my data set these fourth and fifth rows are the fourth and the fifth uh, inputs uh, of a particular person i have this is known as my test or validation set using which what i will do is i have already built a model right so now i will be using this test set the inputs basically what are the inputs occupation and salary i will put it into my model and using the model i will predict certain outputs whether the person will default or not default now this predicted output will be compared with the actual output which is given to me this comparison is known as your second step or your validation or testing phase right here we are validating our model with a given input now this input is also known as out of sample input now why do you call it as out of sample input let us understand this thing over here i have used this three data first three data to build my model right so my model is accustomed to these three data because these three data along with the input and the output is used to build the model so my model is accustomed with these three data this is known as your this is known as your in in sample this is known as your in sample in sample data set right now what i will do next is use these two fourth and fifth these two data in order to test or validate my model now these two data are not that i used not not what i used in my, in building my model right these two are the data which is new which is new to your model these are known as out sample data these are known as out sample data or the test data using which you are going to test your model now when i use the inputs of occupation and salary and predict yes or no as the outcome of default and this predicted outcome i compare with the actual outcome this is known as testing or validation phase wherein i am testing the accuracy of my model right now i will build different models in order to in order to maximize my accuracy or minimize my error right these two are the training and the testing phase or the training set this is known as or this is known as your testing phase right next we have the predict unknown uh, values 
Now, once you have been done with these five data set which we have, the next step, now here the only thing which you have to keep in mind is that all this was your past data because you already have the actual outcome of whether the person will default or whether the person will not default, right? You already have the actual outcome of past because in past, I will know that the person has defaulted on the loan or the person hasn't defaulted, right? Because the data is in past. Now when I'm talking about the future data, for example, a person comes to me and the person wants to take a loan. So I will be judging the occupation and the salary of that particular person. I will be taking those particular inputs, but I don't have the actual output of whether the person will default or not. So this is a new data set which is coming up. This is a new data set which is coming up because I don't have any information of whether the person will actually default or not. I just have the inputs. I have the occupation. I have the salary. Now using these inputs, I will again put it in my model which I have created over here, right? I will put it in the model and I will get the prediction that whether the person will default or not. And if my prediction is coming as the person will default on the loan, then I will obviously not provide loan to this person or maybe I will provide the loan but at a higher interest rate. This is known as your third stage or the predicting unknown values. So first you start with your known these two are your uh, phases where we have known outputs. We have known outputs. So what we do is we take some of the output, some of the data set, part of the data set as a training data. And what do we do using this training data? We, cre uh, we create the model, build the model. Then we check this model on the rest of the data which we have known as the testing phase. And then once we are satisfied with the model, we use this model to predict the unknown values for the new data whose output I do not know, right? Now let's move to the next thing. Uh, again, very important over here is that, all right, now let's move to the how machine learning is divided into two main groups. So first group over here is your supervised learning techniques and ne next is your unsupervised learning techniques. So what do you mean by supervised learning techniques? These are uh, very common uh, machine learning techniques that we have. In this case, we always know the output variable. Now why it is known as supervised? Because the model, once we are constructing the model, the model is being supervised by the output variables that I have. For example, over here, if I say the example which I have taken now that uh, a bank is cre creating a model in order to predict that whether the person will default on the loan or not. Now here when I take, when I took my example that in uh, 15, when I have the five data sets with me, I had the actual output of whether the person will default, yes, or whether the person will not default, no. Right now this output is given to given to me and what I was doing is that I was using I was I had my input I built the model on this and created an outcome right now what I do is using this outcome which I already have with me I was testing how good my model is in my validation or my testing phase right. In this case, your model is actually a teacher or a supervisor who is telling us that whether the model is correct or not. For example, we write 2 plus 2. My machine learning model gives me an answer of 3. I will tell my model that this answer is wrong. How can I tell my model the answer is wrong? Because I know the answer is 4. So now again it will write 2 plus 2 as 5. I will again say it is wrong. Then it will write 2 plus 2 is 4. Then I will say yes the model is correct and I will take this model. I will take this model as my perfect or the final model. Right. So here you can guide your model whether the model is doing good or not because you have the output with you. When you have the output with you as a supervisor, it is known as a supervised learning techniques, right? Because it's a teacher or a supervisor. Now here, what are the different supervised learning techniques? We have, uh, oh, uh, we have regression, which we have done in past. We have logistic regression. We have decision trees. So these are the different uh, knife based estimation. These are the different supervised learning techniques that we have. Now next, let's move 
to the unsupervised learning techniques. Now over here, what are unsupervised learning techniques? Similar to what we have done, obviously it's opposite of what is uh, what we have done for supervised. Unsupervised is where you do not have any output variable. So let me first take an example over here. For example, uh, you have been um, provided with the different uh, pictures, right? Different pictures of different animals. Now you do not know as to which particular category or species this particular animal belongs to. But you have started to create a model and you are grouping these different pictures on the basis of different characteristics. Maybe how many, uh, you know, uh, legs, hands they have, how many limbs they have, how many, uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, are they hairy or are they not hairy? Uh, are they, uh, you know, they are walking on the ground or they are flying or they are... They, they are only able to swim. So these different characteristics you are taking and dividing your pictures into different categories. Now, finally, I might get three different categories of animals, maybe reptiles and, um, you know, so I'm getting three different uh, categories of animals over here. So what is happening actually is that when you're getting these different, different categories, you yourself do not know the actual outcome that we have, right? But, and so we can only, so we, there is no guiding or supervisor or a teacher telling us that whether your output is correct or not. So unsupervised learning techniques do not involve any output variable. You haven't been given with any particular output. So it is impossible to compute any error. Obviously, the predicted outcome that we are getting out of the model cannot be compared with the actual output because we don't have the actual output or the prediction accuracy. In consequence, we do not have any way to validate our solution. In this case, these kind of models becomes a little difficult, but we already have certain models uh, existing which you know uh, makes it easy for solving these kind of problems that we have for example I also tell you that uh, you have been given with height and weight of different students or different sports person of different sportsmen right now using this different height and weight Put them into different categories of sports like rugby, like football, like basketball. Now what you will do, you will get people with very good heights and good weights. These may be the people who are playing basketball. Then we have people with not very uh, huge height and good weight, maybe playing, bas uh, maybe playing football, right? So this is how what my machine learning model will do. They will classify these different categories, they will actually first create maybe four, five, six categories, three categories according to different types of height and weights that we have. And then accordingly, you can say that this particular category belongs to this, this particular sport. So you don't have the output, but you are building a model in order to achieve that perfect solution. Right now, these are different unsupervised learnings that we will be doing. Uh, K means clustering. We have factor analysis. We have hierarchical um, clustering. Right now, let's move to prediction versus inference. Now, what do you mean? What do you understand by prediction? So, prediction means in order to predict the output variables, right, or predicting the response or the y variables on the set of some independent x variables or the explanatory or the features or the input features that we have right so these are this is known as prediction once you want to predict that whether the person will default on the loan or you want to predict the ice cream sales want to predict what will be the ice cream sales for the month of june for the month of july on the basis of different inputs that have been given to you like temperature like the income status of a particular country and so on. This is known as prediction. So in case of prediction, what do we uh, have? What do we see over here is that we have a model. We have a model. We have a model over here. And what do we do? What do we do with this particular model is that we use this model in order to predict the outcome. But are we bothered about the model that we have? We don't, we are not bothered about the model that we have. And that is why this model that we have is known as black box. 
is known as black box why it is known as black box because you are just worried about the final prediction or the final outcome you are not worried about how the input looks like or what is the interaction between the input and the output you are not worried about these things right you are just worried about the final outcome or the final prediction that we are having right so this model that we use over here is sometimes known as black box something which you cannot see something which is completely blank or uh, something which actually you cannot see or understand because for example if i give you a model if i i being a analyst have created a model for a particular bank i i have given the model to them what they have to just do is to take in the inputs different inputs that we have and using these different inputs they just will get the final prediction they are not bothered about how the model is working or what is the actual relationship between the inputs and the outputs they are just bothered about the final outcome that we have so this model for the bank is known as the black box they don't know about the model anything they just have the or they are just bothered about the final prediction this is known as predicting your values then the next thing that we have over here so as i mentioned the model that we used for prediction is known as black box type of models the why is it is known as black box because the bank is not bothered about how the model is working or what the model is all about they are just bothered about the final outcome that they are getting right they don't want to see any kind of interaction between the input and the output variables then the next thing that we have over here is the inference now what do you understand what do you understand by inference inference is basically when now i want to in other words we want to use our model for inference now what is inference when you want to understand or measure the effect of one or more particular predictors on the response variable for example now the uh, the director of the bank comes in for example the director of the banks now comes bank now comes to me and asks me that tell me what are the important uh, variables that are actually affecting the prediction of the default or not default category uh, tell me how these different uh, input variables are related to the output that you have so for example now the bank wants to know that how the response variable or what is my response variable whether the person will default or not default the outcome variable behaves when certain predictor values are changing for example when the salary is increasing or when the loan amount is increasing or when the occupation is changing or when you are changing the gender how all these changes in your input is affecting your final output if this is what my uh, director wants to know or for example they want to know what are the most important they are, they are coming to me and they are telling me see now we are collecting 20 uh, inputs from the particular person in order to predict but i want i don't want to actually collect 20 inputs i want to simplify my uh, data collection so i will just collect 15 uh, different inputs from the person on the basis of which i will now predict whether the person will default or not so now what is my task my task is to see that what all are the different features or inputs which are actually more important in order to predict so i will select those different 15 uh, different inputs and using these 15 inputs i will be predicting my outcome and these 15 inputs i will be telling my director that you can now collect these different in inputs instead of collecting 20 so the bank is actually optimizing they are reducing the time of taking up the loan right so it's good for the customers so that is what your uh, inference part is all about here the model that we have cannot be a black box because i have to understand the model i have to see what inputs are important i have to see how changing these inputs are changing my response variable right so now if we want if we want to use our model for inference we must know the shape of the function so over here over here we had <clears throat> over here we had the function for example we have a function of x1 x2 x3 dot 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 xn which i am using to predict my outcome 
which my which I am using to predict my outcome. So this function, what is the shape? How is the how is this function written? I am not worried about that because it's a black box. When I am just predicting, I am just worried about what my outcome. In case of inference, in case of inference, I want to understand this as well. I want to understand how this is related to my output, how x3 is related to my, and what is this x1, x2, x3? These are the di different inputs. I want to know the interaction of these inputs among themselves. I want to know how these inputs are affecting my output. So I need to understand what, I need to also understand my shape of the function in case of an inference uh, model. Now, machine learning techniques listed that can be used for prediction only. Basically, you can only use these kind of models for prediction. You generally cannot use it for inference. For example, you have uh, SVM, you have decision trees, you have K-means, K-nearest neighbor. So you have different models which you can only use for prediction. You might not never be or will not be easily able to use it for inference. Basically, how the inputs are working. These models are created and done. You just get the, you just put in the input and get the output. You are not bothered about how it is working. Whereas uh, the next thing which, uh, you know, models which can be used for both prediction and inference are the models like logistic regression or different types of regression like uh, multiple regression, subset regression, which we'll be doing later on, penalized logistic regression. So these are the models which are also used for inference along with the prediction, wherein you can understand the relationship between the different variables, how these different variables are affecting your output and so on. Right? Now let's move to uh, the different topic over here, which is restrictive models and flexible models. So now you can again divide your, uh, you know, different machine learning models into restrictive models and flexible models. So now, as the name suggests, as the name suggests over here, we have the uh, restrictive models are the models which are, which are uh, supervised, some supervised machine learning met methods are pretty restrictive. For example, they only allow a limited number of shapes. For example, when I was saying that function, uh, you construct a model, in order to predict the outcome, right? So this function can only take a particular form. Maybe it can only be linear in shape. Basically, you're talking about linear regression. It can only give you outputs in terms of 0, 1, yes, no. Maybe you're talking about logistic regression. So restrictive models are models which uh, can only take a particular shape, can only give you certain kind of outputs. It cannot give you all the different types of output. When I talk about log linear regression, this can give you output in the form of different numbers, any number, any continuous number, but it cannot give you an output in the form of just zero and one, or maybe just two numbers, or maybe just discrete numbers. Over here, logistic regression can only give you output in the form of in between values between 0 and 1. So it can only predict values between 0 and 1. So you are actually restricting these different models in terms of the output that you can get or in terms of the shape the model can actually take. Right? Now what are the other models? The other models are known as the flexible models. These flex flexible models uh, allow many different shapes of the function. When I say many different functions, many different shapes of the function is available, you, me, you I mean to say over here is that it can give us different range of output. For example, when we talk about random forest, which is a very, very common uh, machine learning model that people use and one of the very good uh, models that we'll be working on. So random forests are the models which can give you outcome in the form of a uh, continuous variable. It can give you outcome in the form of a just yes or no. It can give you outcome in the form of just zero and uh, between zero and one. So the outcome and the shape of the model can be, is very flexible. It can adjust easily. These are known as flexible models. Now you will say that once we have the flexible models, what is the point of using the, uh, you know, the models which are actually restrictive? Why are we using restrictive models when we can easily use the flexible models over here? So flexible models uh, have better prediction accuracy than flexible models have better prediction accuracy than restrictive models. So flexible models, it can take any, the uh, function f can take any shape you can predict any different types of outcome 
and it gives you better accuracy. We have all these advantages for the flexible model. Then why we should go for restrictive model? We should go for restrictive models because they are easy to use and they can be used for inference. Like it cannot. So in case of in case of flexible models, flexible models are good for prediction. Where you want a very high prediction accuracy, you will go for flexible models. But wherein you want to use your model for inference, for inference, in that case we will go with the restrictive model. So wherein, for example, my director is coming in and they want to know the different inputs which are affecting my output. What are the important variables? What are not important variables? How they are related? Then I will obviously go with a restrictive or a easier or a inference uh, because I want to go for inference. These are easier models. The restrictive models are generally easier models and you can use these models for inference. Whereas if you want to create a model just for the prediction sake, then you will go for a flexible model which is a little difficult to understand. The next model that uh, the next thing that we have is uh, for example restrictive models have better prediction. This is a very good point. Restrictive models have better prediction on the new data. So we have learned what new data is all about in, uh, in the beginning. Now uh, when you have a new data set and you want to use this new data for a prediction then we use a restrictive model because restrictive model gives you better prediction on the new data, on the data whose output you do not know. You just know the inputs and you want to use these inputs to create a prediction. So these are known as new data sets and new data sets when you want to predict, when you get a good prediction on the new data set, you will be using your restrictive models, right? A flexible model can perform greatly in the data set it was created on which is your in sample data. However, we apply the same model on a new data, the predictive accuracy could be modest. On the other hand, restrictive models have good prediction for the new data set. So again, when you have new data and you want to get a very good prediction on that new data, you will be using a restrictive model. Whereas when you have the, uh, when you want to, you know, uh, also create an inference rather than just prediction, then again, you can go with uh, your restrictive model, right? So this is all about the basic theory. In the next class, we'll be working on particular thing more. Thank you.